All right. <clears throat> welcome, everyone. This is Dwight Woods, the Jeet Kune Do Rebel, and welcome to episode number 26 of the Jeet Kune Do Dialogues. We will be on today with my Jeet Kune Do and Kali senior, Tanya Subing Subing Monroe. So um, I came on a couple minutes early to uh, give her time. Hey, Sif Sifu Nick. Uh, Sean Foon, how you doing? Um, give her time to get on board with us and we will see how it goes. So she's right there. I think this is gonna work really well, guys. All right, I'm excited um, because, well, let me wait until she gets on. <laughs> I'll try to control my, my excitement. Adding, adding, adding. I don't think we're going to have that uh, three tape nonsense today, guys. And I'm grateful for that. Things always work better when, when girls are involved, don't you think? Or is that sexist? I don't know. I'll have to edit that out. All right. Let's see. Let's see. Let's see. Give it a second. Hey, son. Hey, Tommy. Oh, wow. Anthony's still uh, out of town. Okay. So the, the technology is, um, whoops, we didn't get an answer from her. Okay. Let me try the second way. Okay, stand by everybody. Mr. Willis. Oh, come on. I don't want to do a lot of uh, talking to fill in the time while we wait on the technology. I'm getting up to talk about as it is. Okay, don't worry, Tanya. I'm doing everything on my end to uh, to get you on here, okay? Hello. Ta-da. How are you, beautiful? I'm okay. How are you? I'm doing good. Oh, man. Okay. See? We didn't have the usual problems that we have when we try to do this. And that's because you are involved. <laughs> I don't know about that. I'm not <laughs> good at this either. All right. So, okay. So let me do my official um, opening, right? Everybody, welcome to um, episode 26 of the Jeet Kune Do Dialogues with uh, Tanya Subing Subing Monroe. So my guest today is a pioneer because, one, she's my first ever female dialogue partner, right? But also, she's the first person with the surname Subing Subing that I have been able to talk to. But let me confirm this before I announce it. So on page 99 of this book right here, okay, it says something like, we entered a girl into the internationals. She was given the other girl's fits. She would attack, sidekick, trap, and score with her own punch. But the judges didn't recognize what she was doing, which was trapping, and they disqualified her for slapping. Was that you? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, that was a fun oh thing. Oh, my God. That's so cool. That's so cool. See, 
I don't know how many people in the JKD world are aware of that. Yeah, uh, funny story because I had been uh, studying with Guru Dan and Guru Richard for about three months. And he okay. said, I want to uh, put you in a tournament. Uh -huh. And I said, oh, okay. So we get down to the Long Beach uh, Internationals and they have the long, uh, I had never been in tournaments, so they had the table set up for all the belts. And since we didn't have belts, so I turned right. to him and I said, so where do I go? He says, oh, just go in the black belt. I said, <laughs> in the what? <laughs> he says, just go in the black belt. I said, okay. So I got in line, got there. And the girl they put me against was a real traditional karate. So uh -huh. Uh -huh. Uh, it was like perfect. It, uh, when they said go, she threw a reverse punch. And I just pox out, boom, boom, douse out, and I'm to the face. And the, so they <laughs> called me, a, a, you know, gave me a warning. So then right. did that the second time, same thing, exact motion. Second warning. On the third time, she got a, she got a little, uh, you know, uh, aware. And so when I pox out, she gave me some forward energy. I duck down, boom, back fist. They disqualified me. I was like disappointed. I was so, because of Guru Dan, you know? And I looked to the side at him and he's smiling. Yeah. So I get off and I said, sorry, Guru. And he goes, oh no, you did just what I wanted to see. <laughs> he said, they're not ready for this. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Oh my God. And one you of know, my oh. older instructors, because I used to take uh, uh, under Bob Algria and Chuck Norris as a okay. teenager. He came, okay. he came over to me and talked to me. He goes, he goes, if you're going to do tournament, he says, you got to learn the tournament, tournament game. And, um, right. uh, yeah, I said, okay. <laughs> so, okay. So let me, so let me clarify. That was your first tournament. Yes. And you had only been training. Now was this, this was 74. So was that Kali Academy or backyard group? Which one? Uh, well, original. Well, that was already. I was already in the Kali Academy from from the opening. Uh, but we had studied a little while with Guru Dan and Guru Richard in his backyard, because right. uh, well, actually, Guru Richard was a family friend because I was a Lukai Lukai, mm -hmm. and um, they, my father in law and Guru Richard worked together. So that's how we knew them. Oh, yeah. That was Continental, Continental Air Force. Yeah. Uh -huh. <laughs> yeah. 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 So um, that's how I met Guru Richard. And okay. then through him, we met Guru Dan. And they used to come to all our family functions, parties, luau's. And mm -hmm. uh, so we used to work out with Guru Dan, not like, like a class uh, situation, more of a friends situation. Yeah. And yeah. Um, at the time, my ex-husband and I were taking uh, lessons with um, Cam Yuen with the uh, Praying Mantis. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. And we got asked to leave that school uh, because we were working out with Guru Dan at the time. And he posed a question and uh, Cam kind of almost like a challenge, but not, he wanted to answer his question. And when Ted uh, did a technique on him, he didn't like it. So he said, oh. so he said, Oh, where are you? Uh, where are you getting this style from? And he, we said, we're working out with Dan. He goes, well, I think you better stick with, uh, one system and so you you need to stick with girl death oh man yeah yeah it was fun, well, that, <laughs> it was fun but, though that was kind of typical of that era yes right oh yes yeah oh yes yeah yeah because i studied um when i was young my father was in the country temple from hawaii I, my father was born raised i was in hawaii See, that's what i was going to ask you because you talked about luau's so yeah. you are are, are you Hawaiian born or California born? Hawaiian born. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. Okay. Great. Don't don't forget the story you were telling me. But I want to ask you this: Is there, are there significant differences in any way between 
Hawaiian born Filipinos and then like maybe California born Filipinos? Yeah. Yeah. There are? Yeah. Hawaiian Hawaiian people, it's not so much the, the I, I don't think it's the blood. It's it's the the mentality. It's the it's a it's a more of a spiritual thing. Uh, okay. Hawaiian people are. It doesn't matter. That's what, the great thing about Hawaii. It wasn't. There's so many different ethnic groups, but it's, yes, it's a it's a it's more of a a, a personality. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. And so okay. So now back to. I hope I didn't forget the story. <laughs> You got to keep on track of this because my memory's not I, good. <laughs> no, let me tell you, I have been so nervous about doing this with you because oh. I'm, I'm like, well, I don't know enough about her okay. to ask her the right questions to make sure that everybody learns everything about her. Okay. <laughs> okay. So, all right. So let me let me okay. Let me try to get back. Oh, let me ask you something else. I'm just, I'm not okay. gonna worry. Subing, Subing. Oh, yes. Before, before I uh, discovered that that was your maiden name, the only other Subing, Subing I had ever seen was Telesporo Subing, Subing. Yes. Old video from Sifu and Asano of him in his cap, in his boots, weaving double stick. Yes. That's your granddad? That's my grandfather, yes. Oh, my God. Yeah, my I grandfather was from Cebu. Right. And then he, uh, this is just what I've been told. He was one of seven survivors of a major uh, battle with the Spaniards. And at the time, they had to um, take refuge up into the mountains where he got to, prior to that, he was a Skrima. And then, mm -hmm. but beings uh, held up in the mountains, he studied with uh, the Moro people, with the mountain okay. people. And okay. so when Guru Dan discovered that was my grandfather and everything, and he said, oh, they thought he was a Moro. And uh, I, I said, no, no, he, he was not Moro. He, he just studied with the Moros. Mm -hmm. But um, I'm told that they have a annual Subing Subing festival in, either in Cebu or um, I want to say Mindanao, but I'm. It's on YouTube. I looked it up. Yep. It's on YouTube. But uh, supposedly he was a great warrior and a hero, and mm -hmm. um, yeah. But I did not meet my grandfather till I was thirteen. Okay. Yeah, my father uh, was born on Mali, and then they migrated to Oahu, and. Um, his mother passed away when he was just two and from childbirth. And uh, so my father was kind of raised back in those days. My grandfather worked up in the mountains. He, he had a charcoal pits and mm -hmm. they'd go up to the mountains every day, cut wood, bring it back down. And uh, so they had like, uh, not like foster homes, but care homes for kids who yeah. didn't have mothers. Yeah. Yeah. So he was kind of raised with that, and then his his godmother um, partially raised him. So he didn't get to – he remembers in the camp watching all the old Filipino men work out with the sticks mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. everything, And uh, but he actually didn't get to really practice with him. And he said back in those days, they kind of like kept it uh, like a hush-hush thing. They would get together and work out yeah. on the fields. And uh, so he didn't really know too much about it. Um, my uncle, who was older than my dad, he knew a little more. And um, so they weren't really raised with, with the Filipino uh, culture. So we don't speak any right. Filipino. Um, uh, so when Guru Dan discovered that and he went to my grandfather's place and visited him, um, it was a cute story because he said him and Guru Richard went to the camp and there was big, big Kiavi logs and uh, my grandfather was going to go pick one up. And that's why he was in his boots. That was his work clothes. And, uh. Yeah. And so then he said Guru, da Guru Richard and him went to go pick it up and he was just like, 
They couldn't get off the ground. <laughs> and this is my grandfather. He, he said, your grandfather kind of laughed, chuckled, and then he went over there and just picked it up, boom, up on the thing, you know. I said, he said, technique. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, so, okay. Were you, were you the first and or the only female in the backyard? Yes. Um, and, and then that also came about. The... Well, no, it started out. Uh, the building that we were in had two sections. And mm -hmm. good old Richard taught the girls class in one side. And then okay. Guru Dan taught in the other side. And okay. when Bruce Lee died, Guru Dan just became uh, so famous. And people were just coming in droves. Um, so they yeah. had to uh, break down the wall and make it one giant room. And so uh, most right. of the girls quit because they, they, they didn't want to work out with the guys full contact. Because we, we did full contact. Mm -hmm. So um, then the ones mm -hmm. that did stay, they ended up quitting after a little while. So I, for a long period, I was the only, only female. Yeah. Okay. Do you remember when the next female showed up and who it was? Uh, good old Dan's niece, Mary. She started, um, a, yeah. I want to say, a little while after that. She was very young. She was maybe, I want to say, 10. Um, oh, wow. And then the next one, I would say, would be Graciela. Okay. Right. That's what I thought. Yes, Yeah. That's what I thought. Yeah. Yeah. And um, Graciela, and then about a so year after Diana, we left. Diana Inosano says that you were one of her earliest female martial art role models. Would you have had yeah, a female martial art role model yourself? Yes. When I was younger, I used to watch uh, Malia de Coscos. Ah, really? And it's funny because when Guru Dan took me to the internationals, she was there. Yeah. And she right. was lined up in the black belt. And I wanted to go against her, but they did it <laughs> by height. And she's way yeah. taller than me. So I was like trying How to stretch so I could move yeah. back. I moved back three people trying to stretch tall. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Oh, that's, that's, that's so funny because, I like watching you know, her. when you. Yeah, when you were talking about about the Paxau experiment at the internationals, I remembered um, Burton Richardson, who yeah. lives in Hawaii, told a story of using the Paxau in competition, and Richard Bustillo said to him, well, that's because you know how to fight. Right? Right. <laughs> Oh, no. Did I lose you? I Can out. you still hear me? A little bit. I didn't hear what you said. Now I got you. Oh. Okay. All right. Okay. So, so that's one coincidence. The second coincidence is this. Uh, you know I'm, I'm going to be dialoguing with Diana um, in a little while. And uh -huh. she's big in the movies. And I have to tell a story. Yes about my movie experience with Mark DeCascos. Okay. <laughs> so we have we have this be we have this small world right yeah. that's just huge. <laughs> There's so many people right um so okay so now outside of of martial art we were talking about role models Outside of martial art, for your generation, who would have been a, a life role model for you? My mother. My mother and my father were my biggest um, 
role models. We were a very close family. We did everything together. My mother was the structure. Mm -hmm. um, uh, yeah. My dad was the fun-loving Hawaiian guy singing music. He was very strong, very buff. But my father taught me all about martial arts, about body. When I was five, he started teaching me um, the Kaju Kempo. And then um, yeah. judo, some uh, Western boxing. My uh, old and I are four years apart, so I guess I mm -hmm. was going to be the boy. So I was very athletic. So my dad taught me all these things. Uh, yeah. And he also taught, uh, yeah. my dad was really high on respect and um, the old traditional, you take care of your family, protect your sisters, you know, all, all this. And so for me, I think they were my biggest role models, uh, just the way they loved each other and they, they just loved family and um, all the things they taught us. Uh, very, very yeah. rare. So yeah, they were special. Okay. And you stayed at the, the Kali Academy until when? 1976. Then uh, uh, Dan and Richard certified us uh, to become instructors. And we moved and started a school in um, San Diego. And okay. we had been doing like seminars, weekend seminars there with a few people. And at a, at a gentleman's home, his name was uh, Sam Northcote. And then we decided to try to open a school there. And so a guru, Dan and Guru Richard gave us their blessing and uh, they came down for the opening. And, and uh, But back then, uh, the Jeet Kune Do, it was like uh, teaching commercially and um, it was very hard, very hard because it wasn't like the other styles where they already had it all broken down and had everything commercially uh, thought yeah. out. Uh, we were like lenient. Yeah. So we didn't have a belt system. We didn't, you know, <laughs> we did full contact. Uh, we didn't use equipment. <laughs> you know, so it was hard for people to come in and watch and then. You had, you know, you had those few that knew what they wanted, and that's what they wanted, and so that those were our students. Yeah. Uh, but it wasn't enough to pay your rent, you know. Right. <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> in fact, there's a funny story. Um, Sam Northcote, who was two, came into the school one night, right? Bikers, ex Hell's Angels, and he was like 300 pounds, big burly dude with beard. Uh, they came in and watched two nights in a row. And then, so the, on the third night they came, uh, they stayed and sat down after class and asked questions. And so then they said they wanted to learn. So they started class. And uh, when they started, it, in fact, the first night that they started, we were doing the, uh, uh, the drill, you know, ABC and, and, and all those. And so we were doing the knocking the forearms and, and jousts up, back up. And so he was an odd man. So I, I, I worked out with him. And so uh, uh, a couple months uh -huh. later, we got to know his wife, got to know them well. And she goes, you know, I got to tell you this funny story. She goes, when Sam first started, that first week he started, he said um, he came home and he said, there's a little bitch, excuse me, in this class <laughs> that beat the crap of my, he says, she hurt my arm. <laughs> I laughed so hard. <laughs> so then his wife said, I think I'm going to decide to join your class. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, but it was fun. But we, we didn't it. make it financially there. Yeah. Uh, so then we came back. And every time we came back, because we did that several times, we would teach for Guru yeah. Dan. And uh, yeah, so it was a long haul back then.
but it was a fun time back then. The college academy was was uh, I yeah. I, I tell you, everybody the story. Ever, it was so amazing. To me. Did you uh, do again? Did you ever do again? tournaments again? Did you ever no. do tournaments? No. 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 <laughs> no. It was because I had been in uh, because I had been in with uh, Bob Algria and Chuck Norris. We did the tournament thing in our class, um, and then learning this, right. uh, it was not what yeah what I wanted to do yeah. Yeah. And so we, we talked about differences between Hawaiian Filipinos and, and mainland Filipinos. What about between Northern uh -huh. California and Southern California Filipinos? Uh, the old people from and um, I think they're a little more open to, well back in those, those days back in those days mm -hmm. um, they were almost uh, the ones from the Philippines and the ones from here were more uh, I want to use the word clicky as far as if you weren't Filipino yeah because I, yeah. I would run into this all the time they'd speak to me in Filipino and I'd say oh I'm sorry I don't speak Filipino and they would get they would get offended um, well, why? Right. Yeah, you're Filipino. Yeah. Why? You know. So it, it was. It, there was just a little bit of. Uh, uh, um, uh, what's the word? Um, clickiness. Uh, so, but that's mm -hmm. come a long way. That's come a long way. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um. Kali Eskrima Arnis. Uh, different names for the same thing or three different things? For me, I believe it's all the same things. It was, uh, when Guru Dan would explain it to us, it was it was broken down to, okay, this guy's an Arnis guy, uh, this guy's a Kali guy, this guy's a, a Screma guy, and each one, I was told, and from the old masters, that depending on what area of the Philippines you came from, like the Sarada, uh, was, mm -hmm. uh, and like my grandfather's, was the, and I've never been to the Philippines, but they said the southern areas where there's more bush, shorter weapon, so everything's tight, frontal. The yeah. longer, like La Romano and Kali, was more of the northern styles, which you had room. And they used the longer weapons. Um, but they all had the same, they all had the same basics. And when Guru Jan first brought them out, it was interesting to see, just like how in the karate uh, people, was mm -hmm. oh no this one's better mm -hmm. this one's better mine's better um guru dan was the one yeah. who who started to m make them change their thinking of this um and then that's when so when you originally saw it you thought okay well he only does that and he only does that but that was only because they weren't coming out yet with their full knowledge you know and then, so as time went along, yeah. then they would share more and more and more, and then it became more of a uh, let's do this to get get together, and you know, instead of fighting each other, um, and that was yeah. very very nice to see, you know, and that was um, a, a revelation at that time, you know, because yeah, they were just like like I said, the karate people, they were they're separate. But um, it was Guru Dan and Guru Richard school that made that blend. And then you had the few like uh, John Macosta and Leo Hron and uh, Kabbalah. Right. Once they saw what Guru Dan was, then they became 
became more open, more free. Uh, then they just all want they wanted to yeah. give knowledge, you know. Yeah. So it was like a stepping stone. Right. Now. Yeah. Now, Kali JKD was the kind of the the brand name under which you you guys operated, correct? Yes. Yes. That's what we were called then. And okay. I, I, it's uh, yeah. It's fun to watch. And that was progression. Okay, wait. I, say that again. I didn't get that. Uh, I, I said that that was uh, the first part, starting of Guru Dan's progression, with his knowledge. Uh huh. We it was it used to be a joke. Uh, our original salute. We had there was like. Ten different ones, and then he finally decided on one because he wanted to yeah. include every style, and he wanted to. He didn't right. want to offend anybody, and you know, Guru Dan. So it, it was like yeah. a joke. Uh, we said, "Okay, our salute's gonna be like five minutes long," <laughs> but he finally he finally did it one, and that has changed over the years. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh, that's funny. That's funny. Um, so, so then you got to train with just about everybody that is listed in his Filipino martial arts book, Heron, yeah. Sarmiento, Inai, Apilado, just about everybody? Like, like just everybody. Yeah. I, I was very, very, I feel no. I'm very, very fortunate. Yeah, to feel their energy, to yeah. hear their stories uh, was it was an awesome thing, you know. And uh, well, yeah. Well, I mean, to that, hear that was very precious. Is, is an awesome thing. <laughs> yeah, it was. It was. Um, uh, Will Maxton... I used to be amazed at the people. I'm sorry. Yeah. No, I was. Um, Will Maxton says, "What about the first stick tournament in San Diego?" That was. Gosh, I can't even remember what what year that was. Mm -hmm. uh, I can't even remember what year that was. Um, we had a few here in California. We would um, we would go with um, the medieval time people, and we would go there, and they invited us to spar with them, um, which they uh -huh. thought we were crazy because we didn't wear gear, uh, and we fared really well, <laughs> but. Um, uh, was, at that time, at that time, everything was experimental, and it was it, it, we we would go wherever anyone would want to try it out. You know, yeah, it was very a it, much yeah. experimental time, especially with Guru Dan. Uh, yeah, his yes. head was just constantly spinning, and so uh, everything was experimenting. Yeah, so we I know I, everything and everything. Um, so. <laughs> Yeah, so I I was told a name, um, of a term of endearment for you, which is Kali Mom. Yeah, and I was given um, I was Mark told that term, right? Uh, because uh, yeah, I teach for Guru Mark Dan, Stewart, kids classes, yeah. Mark Stewart, Blaze, um, uh, Dave yeah. Hines, and um. All the all the teenagers uh, started with us, you know, and so they called me Kali Mom. Yeah. <laughs> Do you? Okay, now I'm gonna throw out um, three names, and you tell me if you remember them. Uh, no, actually, you mentioned Dave Hines, um, Barry Schreier. Yes. Yeah. All our teams. They were. Yeah. Uh, they uh, were with us in Huntington and, Beach at our school in Huntington and, Beach, and right. 
and uh, and, uh, Shui and Nguyen. Uh, oh yeah, yeah, they were my babies. <laughs> wow, wow. Yeah. yeah, I mean, I I have I have um, I have the the Kali JKD videos from, I think they're from 1982. Okay. Yeah. You right? have videos? I mean, just, just yeah. great. Yeah. To, to this day, that is still awesome material, even 30-something years later. Um, yeah. And now, what was, what was, let's drop another name, Jeff Imada. Tell us about him. Oh, oh yeah. <laughs> um, Jeff, sweetheart. The group, uh, there's a black and white picture. Um, I don't even know who, who has it, uh, but of, of part of the original class and uh, Jeff Imada, mm -hmm. there's uh, Ramon, Val, uh, uh, Tim Watanabe, um, Tim Tackett's in the picture. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, great, 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 great group. Yeah, those are I, really I, fun days. Yeah, I know the one. Yeah. Well, I just recently um, I hadn't you seen should... Go to Dan in years, and this last uh, uh -huh. February I went up to the school to visit him, because um, I've told you before I I take care of my mom, so uh, right. I don't get out a lot. So I went to go visit Drew Dan and I, t I called Jeff and I said, I'm going to come by and visit. He goes, Oh, that'll be good. And so, uh, Guru Dan wanted me and Jeff to sombrata. <laughs> he made a, he made a sombrata. <laughs> lovely, lovely. <laughs> yeah. It was fun. It was fun. <laughs> yeah. Oh my God. Love all those yeah. guys. You know, that it, it's, yeah, it's because of stuff like that, that sometimes I regret. I never moved to LA, you know? Oh, okay. Yeah. Those, those, those days yeah, were fun. It was, um, amazing as mm -hmm. far as it was coming out. And, um, we would go to the school, work out, teach. Then afterwards, Guru dad always wanted to grab something to eat. Uh, but we'd end up in the parking lot, you know, working out there, still in the parking lot with our getting ready to get in the car. <laughs> we'd be still working because he was constantly thinking. So then we'd go to the restaurant, we'd eat, yeah. and then he'd be wanting to do something across the table. And then we'd get out of the restaurant and go in right. the parking lot there. There were several times <laughs> I'd be the only girl and there'd be like four guys, you know, and we're because the police used to. Uh, frequent that one restaurant we used to go to, and they'd pull in and boom with mm -hmm. guns drawn, and and <laughs> they say, uh, "Don't everybody hands up, don't move." And I, I'm in I'm in the middle there, you know. And they would say, "Are you all right?" And I say, "Oh yeah, yeah, we're just working out." <laughs> it was fun. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, Guru Dan oh, was so embarrassed. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So okay. So yeah. so you 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 mentioned you know taking care of your mom and not getting out much. But um, what was that event where you were? Is, was that on the Queen Mary in Long Beach or something? What was yeah. that event? Yeah, I had been out of the martial arts world for like twenty five years already. And a student of mine uh -huh. uh, saw a comment my niece made on YouTube about my grandfather's um, uh, video. And so she put in there, oh, this is my great-grandfather. Mm -hmm. So one of my students saw uh, Louis Compost. And uh, he, he uh, asked her, oh, if this is your great-grandfather, do you know Tanya? And she's my aunt. And so he said, would you please give her my phone number and tell her to call me? So then uh, yeah. she gave me the number. I called him. And at the time, he said, 
uh, good old Bill Aranda, uh, who passed away. And he's been looking for you. And I said, oh, okay. I said, so I called him. And he was doing a, a year-long monthly segment. He wanted female martial arts uh, instructors to come to his school and do a seminar. And I said, oh, I don't do yeah. that anymore, Bill. And he said, would you please, would you come just to visit my school? I said, okay, I'll come and visit. So when I got there, that's when I found out he was dying of cancer. And he said, would you please do, do this for me? And I said, okay. So I uh, agreed to do it. Uh, and then two weeks yeah. before the seminar, he passed away. And so when I went to the funeral, his daughter told me, she says, um, my dad asked me on his dying bed to ask you if you would still do the seminar. And I said, oh, okay, okay, okay. <laughs> so, and that was funny for me because I got, I was never really the forefront of, of anything we did. My ex-husband, Ted, was. I was the the side guy, uh, you know, and I was the detailer. Yeah. So that's why all the boys, I knew all the boys, because I was the detailer. I would go in and, and tell them, you know, okay, do this, do that, do that. And so um, I never was one to get up in front and public speak. So mm -hmm. when I walked into, uh, I asked yeah. Guru Russ Guente, and uh, those are my students. Louis, will you come in and, and help me, you know? So I get there, and I open the door, and I close the door really shut fast. And Louis says, what's the matter, Guru? I said, there's like a... <laughs> I said, there's too many people. I said, I'm too nervous. He said, Guru, he goes, you got this. He says, you, you forgot how much you know. I said, okay, okay. Right, yeah. We go in there. Yeah, it was it was a beautiful day, though. It was a beautiful day. I yeah. think Bill was watching. He was sitting there watching us. Um, it went so well. And that was my first time back doing it. And, oh, my God, it was such a rush. It was – I was so nervous do, yeah. going there. And the minute I started teaching, it was – such a rush and I, I just enjoyed the day so much so now since then I've been getting asked to do little things here and there yeah. and if I can I try to do it I said because I don't know by next year I might not be able to move <laughs> so uh, right now yeah, I'm doing I, whatever I, I can I, I, I figured that people would then keep requesting that you stay active in martial art huh yeah, that I, I get. I've gotten a lot of, uh, uh, you know, requests for to teach or to, you know, uh, but yeah, right now it's not in not in my uh, not in my path right now. <laughs> yeah, but yeah, but I, yeah. Well, I I um, but I, like, I appreciate I like, your I, I really did. Oh yeah, right. Yeah. But that's why I feel so honored that you agreed to come on the program with me. Oh, well, you, you have to know this, Dwight. My husband has been just going crazy because I get so nervous. And he said, I said, should I do it? I, I don't know if I should do this. I can't, uh, you know, <laughs> fix it. <laughs> he said, you'll be fine, you'll be fine. Yeah. I said, okay, I got to pray hard on this one. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, okay, so, so let's, let's do this. This one's going to be tough for you. Okay. I always ask, I always ask my guests to suggest some other people that would be excellent guests for the program. So, who comes um, to mind? Been watching, uh, I looked at some of your, well, all of your interviews, and um, 
well, you mentioned Jeffy Mata. You mentioned uh, you're going to have Diana. Um, Cass, Magda. Uh, Tim, uh, now, in Tim Tackett's, um, Bob Ward, Tim Tackett, all the, the we called them the, the rough bunch. They were the, the hardcore <laughs> rough bunch. Yeah. Um, Big yeah. bad dudes. <laughs> uh, a lot of them, uh, you know. Uh, uh, well, you already mentioned Del Pollard. Del's a sweetheart too. Um, yep. Yes. Any, uh, yeah, any, of, any of the old group, uh, I, they have the same, same stories, and it's funny because I watched you talk to um, Guy when you interviewed Guy. And how he was talking about Guy how the time has changed, you know, as far as having a school, teaching people. And because back then, yes, we all did whatever they wanted us to do, whether it was fall on our head, uh, work out with live blades and no, no equipment. Um, we did it. You know, mm -hmm. now you do it and, and right. Uh, there's no doing it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, uh, wait, I, that's, I, I lost you there for a second. Okay. Can you hear me now? Yeah, I can hear you. Yes. Yeah. You're back. Okay, yeah, I, I, it was, and with Guru Dan um, and Guru Richard at the time, like I said, everything was so experimental because uh, Dan, uh, Guru Dan wanted to make sure everything, Bruce, uh, we would go over everything. He'd put a bench on the middle of the floor, put two chairs on it, have somebody up there with a sword, have somebody down here with a, with a knife, have somebody down in the dark. And then we do light blades, and it was crazy. But he wanted to see what worked. <laughs> he he just wanted to see what worked. Right. And uh, yeah. When we, we when we look back at it, you know that was craziness. It was craziness. <laughs> and we had so much fun when other mm -hmm. schools would visit, like all the the BKF, all the big names would come down there. Wallace and all of them, uh, Euphrates and all of them would come down there, want to work out in class. And yeah. Um, yeah, Guru Dan and well, not so much Guru Dan. Guru Richard was kind of funny. Uh, he was like a jokester. So if he had one of the big black belts in there, he'd put them with somebody who's been working out four months, three months, you know, a beginner, and he would do it just for fun. Uh, we would, we, he would <laughs> constantly be joking, you know. Um, but yeah. it was really, really interesting to see Bruce was so far ahead of his time and so was Guru Dan. Guru Dan was always talking about yes. Seagung Bruce, but Guru Dan was just there with him, you know, as far as mentally, mm -hmm. knowledge, and, and uh, so that was a time to, to watch. Yeah. That was a yeah. breakthrough I think for a lot, martial arts. I, right. Not enough people, I don't think. I mean, within our circles, yes. But outside of our circles, I don't think enough people know the contribution that Dan and Asano has made. I lost you. Did you hear me? I can't hear you. No, I didn't hear you. Oh, okay. No, I was I was saying that outside of our circle, not enough people know the contributions that Dan and Asano has made. No. And and like yeah. I say, especially back then, to see that, um, yeah, it's not uh, as common knowledge that being being out of it, it's. 
I thought it would be well known what a contribution he did. Um, right. Because he was the the catalyst that got all of the Filipino people, the martial artists together. Um, he opened up his heart and doors and mind to anyone and everyone who was just wanted to learn. And I had never yeah. met a, I've never met a man like him. Um, he was so innovative uh, and it was a constant thing. It was, he's a true, what I say, dedicated his life to this because it was nonstop. Um, he was constantly thinking of how and what and why and when, uh, yeah. structure, people's bodies, just, just everything, yeah. everything. Um, yeah. So it was an amazing thing to watch. was very hard to learn from him at that time because he was constantly spinning and, you know, just spinning out so much, you know. But I think that's where... Yeah. Go to Dan and go to Richard. <laughs> and then also the other yeah. main person that was a catalyst there was um, Jerry Poteet. That blend uh, to me was the meaning of yin and yang. Because without all of them, uh, it wouldn't have been the same. Yeah. 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 When you saw him back in February, um, did did you did he seem similar or very different, or what was the impression that you got? Well, in the sense of very different physically, um, I mean he's amazing still mentally yeah. and right. physically yeah. for for what he's doing and still doing. But back then, yeah. yeah, he was much more, even more uh, physically, you know. Um, and the knees don't work as well. Because when we study, um, the, the footwork. When I came back and I went to uh, Bill's funeral, my husband now, who is not uh, Marshall, he, um, they did like... Uh, tributes, everybody did something, and my head looks different from them, and I said, well, mm -hmm. I said, I think he has more of the beginning basics and structure, uh, it was a lot more, when yeah. we learned it, it, was a lot more flowing, a lot more body angles, a lot more... Um, what I what I could pick out, I see that, that somewhere along the line, you get so much knowledge that the basic stuff sometimes gets lost. When we were learning from the masters, mm -hmm. one of the, well, a couple of the main structural things about the Filipino arts was the cutting edge, and I I don't. Not that I don't see it, but it's equivalent as it was then. As the cutting edge yeah. and the, the fact of when we were taught, the old masters used to say, and it's almost like Jeet Kune Do at that time, what they were saying. That's why it blended so well. Because they were saying, yes, no wasted motion. So wherever your point ended up, right. you came from that point. So the, the thing of, yeah. of re, resetting was a waste of time. It was straight from where you end up, mm -hmm. you move from there. And mm -hmm. it was forward motion. Yeah. Um, don't see a lot of that now. Yeah. But, I mean, everything, so. Mm -hmm. Just what I said on YouTube. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, it was, yeah. It, it's interesting how it's come along. And like I said, Guru Dan is still the same mentally. He, I, I watched him that night and he still teaches how he taught as far as uh, he puts a lot of knowledge out there. And and people should know that that in the days where we were, 
martial artists didn't do that. They didn't give out all their knowledge freely, you know? Um, it was right. more held back. Uh, yeah. So he was a, he was a pioneer. Um, mm -hmm. With the Jeet Kune Do, it was, among, it was crazy. Among that group of masters, was there anybody you wanted, you would have wanted to spend more time with, if possible? Don LaCosta. And, well, actually, uh, there's three. Yeah, well, I call them my top four. It's Cabalas, uh, Leo Horon, okay. John LaCosta, uh -huh. and Ben LaGusa. Ben LaGusa. Um, in common, was what I consider the trilogy as far as physical, mental, spiritual. Not all of them had, not all the rest had what I call mm -hmm. the spiritual. Um, uh, they, they just had this calmness, this deadly calmness uh, when they spoke, yeah. when they moved, when you felt It was just amazing to me. Uh, John LaCosta, I would say out of the four, had it the most. And the stories he used to tell us about the wars and uh, things he had to do and how things he used mm -hmm. and was really I really really you could just feel feel their their energy it was just a, something special yeah um yeah wow that's why I really treasure the time I spent with them yeah yeah awesome. okay awesome. well I treasure I treasure the time that you spent with me this evening Ah, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> All right. So will will you will you agree to do this again? Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. it's not as bad as I thought it was gonna be. <laughs> I thought it'd be so nervous. <laughs> yeah. But I guess no, you like because, what you're talking um, about. I uh, a lot a lot of the people I know who have, who have been watching a lot of people who have been watching, they want to hear more stories. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, there's a okay. lot of stories. <laughs> so I'm not gonna, I, I'm not gonna twist your arm, right, to to give me a definite date. But I just want you to know, I appreciate your taking the time. I want to do it again, but for now, thank you okay. so much. That was so. It was so nice oh, of you my pleasure. to agree. To do Okay. All right. You have, and I'll I'll, t I'll speak to you soon. And thank you for doing this. This uh, since I'm at home now, I can watch all this. Okay. Bye bye. Have a good evening. Am I still there? <laughs> okay. You're still you're still there. That's okay. This is okay. this will be the outtakes. <laughs> All right. Okay. okay. So thanks thanks a lot. I'm gonna I'm gonna X you up. Okay. Right. Thank Take you. Take care, my dear. You too. God bless you. Okay. Wasn't that awesome? <laughs> Right? Oh my God, I was so nervous that I was going to mess that up and, and say something stupid. Um, all right, so it's uh, coming up on, on five o'clock here in uh, Miami. So I got to um, recoup and recuperate and then um, get back. Unfortunately, it won't be live on Facebook with you guys. And I appreciate everybody um, coming, you know, coming on and uh, spending some time with, um, with Guru Tanya. Uh, and so in about an hour, I'll be back 
with, uh, well, not on, but I'll be with uh, Diana Lee Inosano. That'll be episode number 27. And things keep getting better. Next Friday, guys, next Friday, episode number 28 will be with none other than Eleanor Academia Magda. All right, so we're really, really cranking uh, during the month of October with the ladies of Jeet Kune Do. So um, that's it for for right now. Um, the dialogue episode with Diana Lee. I'll have the, I'll try to have that up uh, by tonight by 10 p.m. this evening. Uh, that that recording takes a little bit of, of a little bit more time. If not, um, it'll definitely be up. Uh, sometime tomorrow so you guys can check back on uh, Facebook and I'll be there also remember that the episodes are posted on the YouTube channels for both the I love Jeet Kune Do broadcast and the Jeet Kune Do dialogues so be sure to subscribe over there and um, I think that's it all right guys thanks very much for hanging out with uh, Guru Tanya and me and uh, we'll see you next time take care